What's going on everyone? Today I'm going to show you how to set up Skyrim Together Reborn. If you're not familiar with this project, it makes Elder Scrolls Skyrim into a multiplayer game. It's an amazing mod and I strongly recommend giving it a go. Anyhow, let's get started. So I've got on the screen the wiki page from the project. This mentions the version that you need in order for this to work. So the key thing is, is that it only supports Skyrim Special Edition 1.6 XXX and above. Now you can use either the Steam version or the GOG version. And I will go ahead and have links for both of them in the description below, but essentially the GOG version. So Skyrim Special Edition, and then the Steam version. Skyrim Special Edition here. Key thing it also mentions is that, is that the Anniversary Upgrade Paid Mod Pack is not required. In fact, we recommend that you play without it. And then unfortunately, the VR Console Legendary and Game Pass editions are not compatible with this project. So before we begin, I've already installed my version of the game. I'll be showing off both the GOG version setup as well as the Steam setup for this. On my machine here, I've got the GOG version already installed. So with the game installed, you can continue on with the steps that we're going to go over in this video here. So the first thing we need to do is we need to download the Vortex Mod Manager. And as I'd stated, I'll go ahead and have all the links that you see in this video down in the description below. Go ahead and click on the Vortex Mod Manager. Now, in order to download it, you actually need to log in, or if you haven't registered on Nexus Mods, create an account on here for free, and then you can go ahead and download this. Otherwise, it will not download. So I'm going to go ahead and log in. And then obviously I'll put my credentials in here, which I'm going to go ahead and skip over in the video. But basically, once you've hit login, then that's where we will start off again. All right, so now that we're logged in, let's go ahead and do download the latest version now. And we'll click on manual. If manual doesn't do anything, then just go ahead and scroll down. Click on the files tab, and then go ahead and select this one here, manual download. And then it's going to show additional files required. So first, let's go ahead and click on the additional file. So the .NET 6.0 plus, click on that. It's going to download. Let's go ahead and install it. And then close out of that. And then close out of the tab that opened. Now, even though we've got it installed now, it doesn't actually check to see if it's actually there. So don't worry about this still lingering here. Just go ahead and click download. I don't have a premium account, but if you do, then certainly go ahead and use the fast download. I'm going to do the slow download since I'm not that fancy. All right, now that it's downloaded, let's go ahead and kick it off. Just be patient as it starts installing here. Sometimes it launches behind the scenes here, so we'll just go ahead and click down here. Here it is. Let's go ahead and maximize it. All right, so now what we need to do is we need to go to select a game to manage. And then in the search for a game, I'll just go ahead and type in Skyrim. And then we'll click on Special Edition Manage. And then it's going to say Game Not Discovered, at least for the GOG version. The Steam version may automatically detect this but they're practically the same where if you do have to hunt something down. So we'll hit continue. Now the key thing, of course, where the path is or where the game is actually installed to is going to be dependent on if you went through and clicked all the default installation paths originally for installing it. So if you went off and selected some sort of custom path, then you'll need to track it down different than where it's going to be in this video. And I will have the generic de default paths in the description below for both GOG and Steam. So since this is the GOG version installed here, we'll do this PC, C drive, and it's actually gonna be under GOG games, and then the Skyrim Anniversary Edition. Now this is the confusing thing about the GOG version is that even though this is the special edition, for some reason the folders say that it's the Anniversary Edition. So don't let that confuse you this is, in fact, the special edition. So I'm just going to just click on this folder here. We'll do select folder. It's going to go ahead and sniff out the data. Don't worry about this stuff that pops up here. 
the key thing is now we have Skyrim Special Edition, in fact, managed now. If it was the Steam version, it would actually be under Program Files instead of GOG Games. So Program Files, x86, Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Skyrim Special Edition. So that is the difference. All right, so next we are going to go back to the web browser. And then we are going to go to the Skyrim Together Reborn mod, which is on Nexus Mods website. Now that we have Vortex actually installed, we'll have this Vortex button show up here. If you don't have Vortex installed, then you'll see this manual button. And if you went through the step previously of actually installing Vortex, you still don't see it, reboot the computer and come right back to this step. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Vortex. And once again, we need additional files. So let's go ahead and click on the address library for SKSE plugins. Go ahead and click on manual for this one. And if the page doesn't jump down to where it's supposed to, then just go ahead and scroll down. And so this is also kind of another confusing spot here, but we actually want the anniversary edition for this because of us having one version 1.6. Go ahead and click on Mod Manager Download. Slow download. And then we can just click Open here. And it's actually going to require us to log into the, cl the Vortex client that we have. So go ahead and click on Log In on Website. And then since we're already logged into the website, we're just going to go ahead and authorize it. And then it synchronizes and logs us in. And then it starts downloading. Mod is installed. Perfect. So let's go back to the website. And now, once again, as I'd mentioned, it doesn't actually sniff out if this is actually already installed. So don't worry about that. Let's click download, slow download, and open. You can also check this here so that that never actually pops up again. It automatically opens. So download started. You'll look down here in the bottom left, and it will show the download status. So we'll just give this a moment with the, unfortunately, slow download. All right, we got the mod is installed up here. Just to go ahead and double check, let's go to mods and verify that both of these are green and enabled. Now, if you look over here, you're going to see the version numbers. Now, depending on when you watch this video, these version numbers could be different. But anyhow, the key thing is, is that we've got both of these set and both are in fact enabled and green. Next, what we need to do is we need to go up to the dashboard up here. Click on that. Scroll down just a little bit until we get to the tool section right here in the middle of the page. Scroll down a little bit here to fully expose the plus sign. Go ahead and click on the plus sign. Click on new and we're going to go ahead and name it Skyrim Together Reborn. For the target, this is where the game data is. So once again, if you have the GOG version, it's going to be one area. If you have the Steam version, it's going to be in a different area. So first, I'm going to go ahead and show you for the GOG portion. So we'll go over here, we'll click the folder. Now, since we're already managing the game, it did automatically go into this. But if it didn't, then go ahead and do C, Local Disk, C, GOG Games, Skyrim Anniversary Edition. And then we need to click into Data to the data folder, Skyrim Together Reborn folder, scroll down here, and then select the Skyrim Together application. If you have file extensions enabled, then you'll see it as skyrimtogether.exe, both the same exact file, just dependent on how it's being viewed. So go ahead and click on open. And now let me go ahead and show how you can find where it is installed on the Steam version. So if you go into Steam, go into Library, find Elder Scrolls Special Edition, right click on it, go to Properties, go to Local Files, click on Browse, and then this will go ahead and bring up where it's located. And then you would go ahead and click on Data, Skyrim Together Reborn, and then you would go ahead and hunt down. And as you can see here, as I'd mentioned, I actually have hidden file extensions turned off. So it's showing the .exe on it. And the thing that you could do is you can also go up here. You could copy the entire file path out and then paste it into that target field. Hit enter in it. 
and then just select the Skyrim together.exe. We don't need to change anything else in here as long as the target path is proper. So let's go ahead and click on save. And now what we need to do is if you go over the little icon here, there actually is a plus sign. So click on this and now it's going to ask for the Skyrim SE.exe file executable. And so if we go back to the Skyrim Anniversary Edition folder, or if this is the Steam version, then still just go back two sections to the Skyrim Special Edition folder. So right here is the Skyrim SE technically.exe file. So then just go ahead and click open, and then it should launch the game. So one thing to note is that in order to join a game to play with other players, you have to get through the intro portion of Helgen. Once you get through Helgen and you basically exit the cave and get out into the world and you're supposed to go to the first town, that is when you can go ahead and join up with other people. So the key thing is you have to be out of the cave, out in the world. So what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and hit continue here because I have a character right outside of the cave. Mods are currently loaded. Achievements are disabled. Do you wish to continue loading this? We can hit yes. Anyhow, so the key thing is on your keyboard, you have all the way to the left, your control button, and then you have the control button to the all, almost all the way to the right by your left arrow key. So the key thing is hit that right control button and then this will go ahead and toggle the Skyrim Together Reborn mod. And then it gives you the option to actually have a, a chat system. So if you're playing with other people in your game, then you can actually talk to them. If for some reason you're not talking to them via Discord or in person, and you can you can chat with them here anyhow so if we go up to connect and then if it's a server that someone you know is hosting or you yourself are hosting you can go ahead and type in the ip here and if a password is configured for that server then you would type it in here you don't actually need a password to get in for this to work so you could have a passwordless server if it's not a local server or server that someone you know is hosting, then you can always go to public servers. And in public servers, you can go ahead and choose a game. You can see here that people have built out how many players max there are. You can see how many players are currently in. For instance, this one right here has four out of five players in it. You would just go ahead and click join, and then you can go ahead and get in that way. We're going to go ahead and hit back, and we're going to go ahead and type in the IP of a local server. So we'll just delete this out. I'm just going to type in my local server here. I do not have a password on it, so we'll go ahead and click connect. And then so a synchronization will happen with weather, the time of day in the game, along with a whole number of other things. Now, once you're actually connected to a server, then you now have the player manager section here. So we'll go ahead and click on this. And so if someone is actually in the game, then you can go ahead and actually see them here. I quickly switch to the other game client that I have going. So now you'll see that there is in fact someone else in the game here. In this case, it's the character I showed that is just outside the cave, old prisoner man here. So if we go up to party menu, so it's going to have this nice chunk of information here. It gives a rundown of optimal questing experiences here. I will have a link for this down in the description below to go ahead and read through to certainly help make the, the game stable and all that good stuff for you. So go ahead and click on launch party and then go to player list. And now there is an invite button here, which previously there was not. So what we can do is we can go ahead and click on invite and then on the other person's screen in the bottom right hand corner will be a blah 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 invites you to join a party and you can accept. Now the bottom right hand flag will disappear after a few seconds. If it does, you would go back to party menu and there would be an option that basically shows party invites and you can go ahead and select it there as well.
Now, the interesting thing is once you're in a party, well, you can either kick the person or you can also teleport to their location, which makes things really easy. So in this case, I am very far away from where the beginning area is. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on teleport. And so here we are. As you can see, the other person is moving around. They can attack all that good stuff. Some servers have friendly fire on, some don't. This one doesn't have friendly fire turned on, but it's just one of the many features of, of the game. There's also difficulty levels that can be set on the server side, so you can't just steamroll enemies with a full party. It actually adds a nice amount of difficulty to the game. And then also if you take a look in the top left corner of my screen, you also notice that there is now also showing the level of the person that I'm partied with as well as their name. And then the party leader will have a crown icon next to their name, which I will show you in just a second here when I switch back to the other computer. And so as you see in the top left corner, you'll see that Arcadius has the crown because they are the party leader. And then just one more thing to show off within the mod is to the right of player manager is the settings section. And then this just gives you general settings that you can go ahead and set. Languages, font size, audio stuff, as well as if you actually want to see the party up on the top left, or if you want to auto hide the party, timers, where the position of the party is. And so you do have a few options in there. Anyhow, that's all you need to do to get the client side of Skyrim Together Reborn going. The key thing is, is that you will have to always launch it out of the Vortex Mod Manager in that tool section with the Skyrim Together Reborn launcher that we had created. And then just make sure to hover over the icon and press that play button and that will launch the game. You won't be able to utilize it at all if you manually launch it from Steam or if you click it on your desktop icon for the GOG version. So if you found this video to be helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel to follow more content like this. I will be following this video up with a Skyrim Together Reborn server guide. So that's going to be going over the multiple ways that you can get a server going. So keep an eye out for that. Anyhow, until next time, take it easy.